I can open my trunk when my hands are full, get the driving time to my next event, and set an alarm to remind me 5 minutes before I need to leave, and a whole lot more. And anyone can set this up for free using the Shortcuts app without needing to know how to code. In fact, you can even download all these shortcuts using the links down below. Okay, so a lot of us use browser extensions to see if what's selling on Amazon is a good deal, which is great and all, but these don't work on the Amazon app, which is where this shortcut comes in. After you download it, find something that you want on Amazon, press the share icon, and you'll find the Amazon tracker. Tap it and choose the source of your price chart, and now you can see if the current price is a good deal or not. Super useful. So you know when you're at a restaurant and you want to split the bill, including the tip, with a bunch of people? That's what this shortcut here was made for. It's called Tip Split Pay, and when you trigger it, you can tell it where you're eating, more on that in a second, how much the bill is, how much you want to tip, and the number of people you're splitting the bill with. And it'll then tell you what each person has to pay. And the reason it asks where you're eating is because the first time you trigger it, there's an option to view your receipts. This is very useful if you then want to cross-check that with your bank statement. Alright, so this next one is one of my favorites, and what it does is that it takes the next event on my calendar that has a location, asks me whether I'm driving or walking, and then tells me how long it'll take to get there. And if I'm driving, it takes traffic into account. But what sets this one apart is that it will then set an alarm for when I should leave to get there on time. I also made sure to subtract 5 minutes from the start date to allow for some wiggle room in case I take a little longer to leave. If you download this shortcut or any of the other ones I'm mentioning here, you can always change it to fit your own needs. Staying with the travel theme, this next one gives me the ETA to get home and texts it to Vivian. So if I'm out and she's home, I just run this shortcut so that she knows what time I'll get here. And I also do this one in reverse, as a lot of times we meet at this one spot in town, so when I trigger this other shortcut, it tells me the ETA to get there based on where I am, and once again, texts it to Vivian. Alright, so you know when you have someone over and they want to use your Wi-Fi, but you don't want to give them your password? Well, with this shortcut, you don't have to, because when you run it, you'll have a QR code that people can scan to log in your network. And this couldn't be easier to set up, as this one comes straight from the Gallery tab. Just search for Wi-Fi, add it to your shortcuts, add your presets to it, and you're ready to go. The last shortcut before we move on to automations is one that turns my computer on. This is using an app called Wallow, and on its own, this shortcut is kind of pointless, because I can just open up the Wallow app and turn my computer on. But with shortcuts, you can stack multiple actions, so I have it set up so that when my computer gets turned on, so do my lights. The same goes for shutting it down. Alright, so all these shortcuts we went over so far have to be manually triggered on the phone. But now, we're going to look at automations, which are essentially shortcuts that trigger themselves. They're still shortcuts, but something has to happen for them to get triggered. Which is why they're on a different tab called Automations, and this is where you need to choose what needs to happen for a certain shortcut to run. There's no way to share these, but I'll show you how I have them set up. The beauty of this is that once you're aware of how many things can be automated, you can't help but start doing it. Alright, so the first one turns my Wi-Fi on and my cellular data off when I get home to make sure that I'm not using any data. It also turns my outside focus mode off and I'll get to why that's important later in the video. And I always run this and all of my automations immediately without needing confirmation. I also have the inverse of this that runs when I leave my house. Okay, so there's a few apps that I use, and you probably do as well, that have a ton of ads. Unless, of course, you pay for their premium version. But these ads don't run if you're on airplane mode. So I have an automation that turns airplane mode on when I open one of these apps and turns it back off when I close them. And speaking of apps, there's a few of them like YouTube and Photos that I like to use in full screen mode. But the orientation mode on my phone is always locked. So normally I unlock it and then I always forget to lock it again. And you know where I'm going with this. You can set up an automation to set the orientation lock to off when certain apps open, and then another one to set it back to on when those same apps get closed. Alright, so this next one has saved me quite a few times, which is to send Vivian a text message when my battery is about to die. I have it set up so that as soon as my battery drops below 5%, the message gets sent. Staying on the battery theme, I also have an automation that changes my wallpaper based on the battery level. A low battery wallpaper if it's below 20% so that it's painfully obvious that the battery is low. And a different wallpaper for when the phone is charging as sometimes it's kind of hard to tell if it's charging or not, especially if you're using a wireless charger. These are just some random pictures I found online and if you want to set this up for yourself, you need a different automation for each battery level. 
So one for when the battery drops below 20%, another for when it's connected to power, and the last one for when you disconnect it from power. I also have a bunch of other automations related to HomeKit devices, but those are highly specific to my own use case, so I'm not going to go over them in this video. And while we're on the topic of shortcuts, a great shortcut to learning every day is by using today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is an online interactive learning platform where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. Brilliant's lessons focus on hands-on problem solving and let you play with concepts, which has been proven to be six times more effective than simply watching lecture videos. Learning a little every day is a difficult habit to stick to, but it makes a huge impact, and no service makes that easier than Brilliant. If you like building these shortcuts, you're also going to like Brilliant's growing number of programming courses like Thinking in Code, where you'll get familiar with Python, learn essential coding elements, and get in the mindset of solving problems like a programmer. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit Brilliant.org slash from Sergio and you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription. And a big thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Alright, so the biggest complaint against the action button is that it only lets you do one thing, but it can actually be modified to do much more. And don't worry if your iPhone doesn't have the action button, as I'll show you how you can easily simulate it at this timestamp here. For those who don't know, you can go to settings, action button, and customize what it does. But what makes it so useful is that you can also set it to run a shortcut. And a lot of people use it to run a shortcut that essentially brings up a menu of other shortcuts. And I'll link it in the description if that's what you want, but I think that kind of defeats the purpose of the button, as I can just as easily manually trigger those shortcuts without using the action button. So what I do instead is make it dynamic, and that way it performs different shortcuts depending on which focus mode I have on. So if my focus mode is set to outside, the action button knows this and will, in my case, open the trunk of my car. Each focus mode triggers a different action. And before we get to the shortcut itself, to make this even more efficient, I like to have automations that automatically switch between focus modes without me doing anything. I have a sleep focus mode that gets triggered based on time, which in my case is between 11pm and 8am. I have an outside focus mode that gets turned on when I leave the house and gets turned off when I come back. Then I have a workout mode which gets turned on when I open my workout app of choice, which is heavy, and gets turned off when I close it. Lastly, I have a recording focus mode which gets turned on when my phone connects to this Bluetooth device here in my studio and gets turned off when it disconnects. Obviously, these are very specific to me and there's nothing special about these focus modes aside from sleep and recording which block all notifications. The main reason I use them is so that I can activate different shortcuts with the action button based on which focus mode I have on. So when my focus mode is set to workout and I press the action button, it starts playing my workout playlist on YouTube Music. When it's set to recording, it opens up a checklist of things that I need to go through. When it's outside, it opens up the trunk of my car. And when it's on sleep mode, it runs a home kit scene that shuts off every light in the house as well as my TV and turns on the light on my bedside table. And if no focus mode is detected, then it pulls up a small menu of the shortcuts that I use the most. I found this to be the sweet spot for me because when I have a focus mode active, I know exactly what shortcut I wanted to trigger so I don't have to bring up a menu. A lot of people like to have the action button do different things depending on the orientation of the phone. So if it's in landscape mode, it does one thing, portrait another, face down another, etc. Personally, I'd rather not have to worry about the orientation of my device every time, but I left a link for that one as well in the description below. And if you want to simulate the action button, you can do so by heading over to accessibility settings, touch and scroll to the bottom where it says back tap. Then press double tap and it's going to show you a list of things that you can program it to. And if you scroll down past all the stock recommendations, you'll find a list of your shortcuts. Choose the one you want for your action button and now double tapping on the back is the same as pressing the action button. And if you do have an action button, you can use this to basically create a second one. I want to also touch on NFC tags, which are these things here. I bought like 30 of these for less than $10 on Amazon and they can actually be very useful as they can serve as a way to run a shortcut by simply holding your phone near it. I have one of these on each medicine bottle so that when I tap it, it records it in the health app. This comes in very handy on those days that I'm not 100% sure if I've taken it or not. I have a few of these around the kitchen to automatically set different timers based on what I'm doing and I also have a few others around the house to run different home kit scenes. And to set one of these up, all you gotta do is open the shortcuts app, go to automations and scroll to NFC. Press it, then press scan and tap your phone with the NFC tag. Name it and then simply tell it what you want to happen each time you tap the NFC tag like a 5 minute timer. And that's it, you're done. There's a ton of cool things you can set up with these and they apparently last 5, 10 or even more years. 
Some of the shortcuts that people come up with are so advanced that they honestly feel like full-blown apps. And if you want to see all the apps I actually use on my phone, you can find that in this video right here. So I'll see you there.